Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootleggers, shows, death slayers, peasants, vassals, central bankers. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I'm going global. Because I want to talk about the uh, global central bank uh, circle jerk. And uh, it's kind of a, a topical. Well, it's always topical because we, we live in an era now, uh, interestingly enough, where uh, the discussion of central banks and their role has a very high profile. And uh, many people in the streets and laymen are even aware of uh, central banks and central bank policies uh, nowadays. And uh, we have uh, uh, dramatic events and not so dramatic events coming out from central banks all over the globe uh, almost every day now. And uh, we've seen five, six, some odd years of extraordinary um, uh, uh, instruments being used by uh, global central banks. Uh, to fight off this deflationary spiral. And uh, oddly, we have uh, claims now that uh, worries are waning about the deflationary pressures around the globe, but you could fool me because, for one thing, uh, nobody uh, dares raise interest rates. In fact, most countries are still, still moving interest rates down. Uh, we live in a zero uh, interest rate era, and, um, and that's another interesting aspect of this. Uh, discussing central banks, we we see the the media and the pundits and the government all talking about how we've had this amazing uh, six-year bull market and this amazing uh, economic recovery, and of course it's all smoke and mirrors and all uh, perpetrated by uh, this uh, zero interest policy of the Federal Reserve, and then we see all the actions going on uh, around the globe as well. And that's another reason why central banks uh, are so ho high profile. And uh, such a topic uh, right now, we have uh, discussions of uh, audit the Fed here in the United States. Uh, uh, legislature has been introduced yet again to get a full audit. And uh, that's the last thing uh, central banks anywhere in the world would want. Uh, so if that would, were to occur, that would be uh, phenomenal. But I don't imagine it will occur any time in my lifetime. So uh, anyway, so we have the... Certainly the, the dramatic uh, move by the ECB, uh, open-ended QE, uh, till September 2016, for, for the most part right now, uh, 60 billion euros a month. And uh, once this door is open, it, it won't be uh, able to be closed, uh, just like in the United States, just like in Japan. And so they will have to be continuing this, right? Right now they're just planning on the next 18 months in a trillion euros, but this is a Pandora's box. And it will be a Pandora's box in every sense of the word. And, uh, and then also we have uh, Bank of Japan making these extraordinary moves. Uh, and, uh, and their announcement uh, over the last several months that they are now buying stocks. And this is uh, something that separates them from the Federal Reserve and the ECB, uh, stepping which buy bonds. Uh, but uh, uh, the Japanese Central Bank is actually stepping in and buying exchange-traded funds. And, and we also have the government pension investment fund uh, in Japan also uh, buying stocks. So they're going to extraordinary measures to uh, boost uh, their markets and try and keep these deflationary forces from uh, uh, taking hold, uh, which will be a losing battle, especially since the only thing that's holding any of this up are, are these zero interest policies around the globe and this constant stimulus and, and, and some of the numbers I'm going to bring up are going to bear that out and uh, and, and, w and why do all the central banks uh, keep doing this you have to ask yourself you look at Japan with uh, decades of this kind of stimulus and uh, they're still caught in this trap and have the highest G uh, GDP to debt uh, ratio to in the world um, and then we have uh, the United States we had QE1 in 2008 qu uh, QE quantitative easing uh, QE2 2010, QE3 in 2012, and uh, talks that uh, it's, uh, there could very well be a QE4 down the road. Uh, once again, there's deflationary forces in play, uh, possible uh, more recession. Uh, all the growth forecasts uh, globally um, keep getting uh, c uh, revised and, and moved downwards. And uh, we've had this uh, zero. Uh, interest rate policy by the Federal Reserve of the United States since 2008. So uh, 
So anyway, um, and then uh, to uh, get back into this uh, central bank of Palooza, we have all these central bank moves, dramatic central bank moves, uh, uh, just in the last several months in, in Switzerland, in Canada, in Denmark, Peru, Turkey, uh, Japan, uh, Sweden. Uh, this, of course, this is all juxtaposed against all these uh, uh, global currency wars, uh, which makes all this uh, all the more dangerous and all the more dramatic. And, uh, of course, everybody is uh, moving uh, interest rates down, except for uh, a few notable examples like the uh, Ukraine uh, moving up. But uh, let's, let's get into the big picture. We have global central banks monetizing more than 100% of sovereign debt issuance. So that's right. We have uh, global uh, central banks are pretty much the only buyers uh, of sovereign debt on a global level anymore. So they are uh, literally sustaining this whole uh, charade all by themselves. And uh, like I say, they're all joining in in unison um, because they have to. They have to fill the vacuum by the fact that they're not buying each other's uh, crap anymore. Uh, so $3.6 trillion in global government debt now, uh, loading up uh, with uh, buying all this stuff because they have to. 3.6 trillion global government debt in uh, 2015. Uh, and the first time in history that we have negative net uh, sovereign issuance because of this. And that's how you end up with um, more than 100% of sovereign debt issuance is being bought. And uh, we actually have neg these negative yields. So we, we live in, in bizarro land now economically. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why we don't want to really talk about uh, when there's going to be a crash and what's what's going to happen here and what's going to happen there because already they've sustained this um, and it's hard to say how much uh, this hocus pocus and uh, these extraordinary measures they've taken uh, how much it can uh, push the string and uh, kick the can down the road and uh, so Japan, the UK, the Eurozone, the United States ostensibly are the sole buyers of their own debt and uh, so that's a, a scary thought and this is the the so-called recovery the Reco recovery once again not being a recovery for the the masses of those who consider themselves low and middle classes in Europe or low and middle classes in the United States but a recovery for the banks a recovery for all the people who make their money based on what the banks do for them and uh, that's that's where the money's going that's where all the money that's being uh, uh, blown up in Japan is going. That's where all the money that's being blown up in ECB is going. That's where all the money being blown up in the United States is going. All to sustain um, this uh, uh, crazy belief uh, that but somehow injecting money from the central banks uh, into the banks uh, at zero interest and blowing these bubbles all over the world is somehow going to uh, sustain some, some sort of uh, uh, substantial economic recovery with any kind of foundation. So anyway, let's get back to some of these numbers. 23 countries with debt to GDP ratios above 200%. Two, 23. Um, so uh, when you consider, uh, we have uh, also nine countries with a debt to GDP ratio above 300%. And, uh, and, of course, that's all smoke and mirrors, too, because when you factor in the fact that everyone's cooking their books um, and all their uh, GDP numbers are, are, are generally fake and they have all these unfunded liabilities, um, uh, I'm sure the GDP debt ratio uh, numbers would uh, add another 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 countries to that. 90% uh, of industrialized economies' policy rates at or near zero. So uh, no surprise there. You can say you get into the uh, debt to GDP ratio range of 200% with 23 countries. These are industrialized economies with their policy rates at near a huge and a huge surge since 2007. Big shocker there. So anyway, uh, they talk about very low inflation rates and the big shocker there. But I'm not that good at math. I'm not even that good at economics. And, and it's pretty uh, unsurprising to me that we have uh, huge pressure from these deflationary forces. And in spite of all this uh, liquidity being provided by central banks all over the world, uh, they find themselves with very 
low inf inflation rates. So that says the deflationary pressures are extremely high if the only thing uh, holding uh, inflation down with all this money being pumped into the system. Um, uh, it's, it seems like a pretty tense dynamic and uh, self-explanatory, it's self-evident. But uh, of course there's other agendas in play, so it's not strictly going to be uh, economic logic. And uh, a lot of this uh, uh, that we get from the government uh, is a mumbo jumbo and propaganda um, from academics and hired guns. And uh, as I say, world GDP forecasts continue to decline, so that adds to more of what I've discussed in other videos about this uh, fake recovery again. And, uh, and then we also have, um, of course, central banks in the news right now because we have these uh, bogus stress tests being run by the Federal Reserve. So the, both the ECB and uh, the United States Federal Reserve uh, do these bogus stress tests once in a while to try and uh, juke the, the market a little bit. And um, good timing right now, by the way, on the Fed's part. And the, for, for the first time, every U.S. lender passed. And, uh, and of course, uh, once again, it's a lot of uh, uh, trickery in accounting that I've uh, covered in a lot of other uh, videos. And it has nothing to do with the fact that they've uh, uh, decreased much of their leverage or taken any, any less risk. In fact, they're much larger, much more dangerous, and have much many more derivatives associated. And uh, so um, to say they, that they would pass a, a crash and a stress test with the, the reserves they have is, is laughable, whatever they come up with. But uh, what, notably, of course, what they're doing is paving the way for uh, the big shareholder uh, payouts that they're, they want to push up, the um, biggest one since t t 2008. But it, that's kind of uh, misleading as well because we've seen these banks suffering over the years and yet uh, the, the big bonuses continue to be paid out to a certain extent. Uh, and, and, and so there's no performance uh, tied to that. And then uh, lastly, I'm going to uh, finish with um, a really interesting story that came out at Zero Hedge that I'll attach below, but uh, talking about uh, the Bank of Japan and uh, figuring out that uh, they averaged uh, uh, once every three days for the last two years to, to intervene in the stock market and buy stocks. And they always seemed to buy when the, uh, the market was uh, uh, heading south. And so $23 billion uh, they spent on stocks and exchange traded funds. Uh, and, and they would always go in when the market sagged. And uh, so anyway, uh, the interesting thing about that is, first of all, uh, it shows that, uh, once again, are the central banks really independent? Uh, I've seen some very interesting discussions about uh, the whole idea of, of that uh, any central bank is um, actually independent, and that's the argument they use to, to uh, uh, stop being audited, is they have to remain uh, independent from the political process, and yet we see central banks all over the globe that are uh, completely immersed in the political process and certainly serve the political elite class. Um, and this, this story about Bank of Japan um, is a, a perfect example of that. Uh, intervening every three days uh, to prop up the market by buying stocks, uh, creating their own market, uh, and thereby uh, trying to uh, 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 use smoke and mirrors to assure investors that they'll jump in by creating the, the market themselves. Um, so once again, we see that uh, the central banks have everything to do with a global economic system whose uh, business model is completely based on fraud. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?